All right, welcome to another edition of Algebra 2. I'm Mr. Anderson uh, here with you today. We're in Chapter 2, Section 6 today. Uh, we're talking about uh, special functions. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today. Our objectives, first of all, uh, we want to write and graph piecewise defined functions. And we want to write and graph absolute value functions. So those are the two main things we're gearing up for today. All right. So first of all, the piecewise defined function, what is it? Uh, basically, it's just a function that's written using two or more expressions. Okay, it's going to look something like this. Uh, this. This is what it looks like. Now, usually this, um, whoops. Usually, see this line in between here? That's not usually there, but I couldn't figure out another way to write it on here, so the line's in there. But basically, this is this is what it is, and I'm going to talk about this in a, in a minute, but this is what it looks like, and you see this top part here is one expression, and the bottom part here is another expression. So those are your two expressions uh, that you're looking at. All right. Woo! Okay. So here's the, that same um, piecewise function and we're going to uh, graph it and then we're going to talk about the domain and the range. Alright, well let's go through this now. First of all, remember we've talked about this before when we see this symbol here it's pronounced f of x f of x and remember what is it really just equal? It's really just big Y, right? So it really just means Y. So what don't you know get confused when you look at all this stuff here and say oh, what's going on? Alright, here's all it means is this Look at the top part here, where we have x minus 2, and we'll deal with this, the rest of this in a second. But basically, what this means is you have an equation that's y equals x minus 2. That's all that top part means. And then the bottom part just means we have another equation that's y equals x plus 3. That's all it means. We've just got two equations. Now, the only the this other part over here, the x is less than negative 1 and the x is greater than or equal to negative 1. That just tells us what part of the equation or what part of the line to use. That's all it is, okay? So let's let's take a look at these two things and see what we can do here. All right, first of all, the um, y equals x minus 2. Well, if you remember, uh, we've talked about this a little bit here recently. Remember, y equals mx plus b. If you remember that form, the b is the y-intercept m is the slope, and so if we apply that to our equation here, negative 2 is b, and m is the slope, in this case 1, or 1 over 1. So this line, I'm going to start it at negative 2. Now I'm going to kind of, I think I'm going to try to do this as a dotted line here, um, because we're not going to use the whole line, but if I'm going to graph this line, I'm going to start at negative 2, the slope is 1, so I'm going to go up 1 and 1 to the right, up 1 and 1 to the right. So this is what the line is going to look like. I can also go down 1 and 1 to the left. So I'm putting some dots here. That's what the line would look like, y equals x minus 2. Now I'm not going to use the whole thing. Here's where this, the rest of this comes in. I'm only going to use the part where x is less than negative 1. Well, where is x less than where? Well, where is x negative one? It's right here, right? So less than negative one are all the numbers to the left of that. So that means I'm just going to start, and I'm only going to use the part of the line that starts at that point, at negative one, which is right here, and goes to the left. Now notice there's no equal sign on that, so this is going to be an open circle, and I'm going to then use that part of the line. I did not use the rest of this line. I only used part of that line. Okay? So that's the first part of it. Alright, I'm going to change to another color here. So let's go to... Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Let's go with red. Okay, now let's look at the other one. Y-intercept there is 3. So that means I'm going to go up to 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to put a dot right here. Now that slope is also 1. So I'll go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So that line would look something like that. Again, it would go both directions here. But what part of the line are we going to use? 
we're only going to use the part that's equal to negative 1 or everything greater on the x. So that means we're going to start at negative 1. This time it's going to be filled in because it's equal to, and we're going to use all the x's that are to the right or greater than that, so it's going to be all of these. So that's what our graph is going to look like there. It's the two parts kind of combined together. So it's kind of like in pieces, and that's why they call it piecewise, because it's kind of in pieces there. All right, so the domain are, again, what? They're the x values. All right, so what do we uh, want to find out is what x values have I used? Well, if you look at this, you go, have I used all these x values to the left? Yeah, because of this line down here, that's going to keep going to the left. We're going to use all of those. Did we use negative 1? Yeah, we used it up here. Did we use all the ones going to the right? Yeah, the other graph is going to keep going to the right. So we've used, we're, we will have used all of the x's. So under the domain then, we're going to say all real numbers are all reals. We've used all the x's. What about the range? Remember now the range are the y values. So if you look here, you go, starting here, this is at the point where uh, y is 2. I'm using all the y's going up, and they're just going to keep going. So I've used all of those. So down here, hopefully I can fit this in. I'll say, remember, set builder notation. Um, y is greater than or equal to 2. That's all this upper part. But then there's some down here below as well, so we would have to say or y is, well, what happens down here? 1, 2, negative 3. It starts and goes down. Now it doesn't include negative 3, so we'll just say less than negative 3. So our domain would be all x's, all real numbers, and the range would be where y's are greater than 2 or where y's are less than negative 3. All right? Get an idea there, hopefully, a little bit? Let's take a look at another one. All right, now in this one, same kind of thing. What are our two equations here? First of all, we're going to have that y equals x minus 1. That's this top one. And we're also going to have that y equals negative 1. Okay, so let's let's kind of start doing those and see where we can go. Start with the first one. All right, negative 1 is your y-intercept, so let's start at negative 1. And the slope is up 1 to the right 1. Slope is 1, 1 over 1. So again, it's going to look something like this. But now let's not fill this in because we're not going to use that whole line. What part of the line are we going to use? We're going to use the part where x is less than 3. So let's go to th where x is 3, 1, 2, 3. Here's 3 on x. That's where we're going to start our graph. It is not equal to, so we make it an open circle. Um, but if it's less than, we're going to fill in all these lines. That's a pretty good line, wasn't it? Um, to the left. Okay, how about the next one here? I'm going to change colors again. How about this time we go with green? Ooh. All right. Now in this one it says uh, y equals negative 1. Well remember, whenever we have y equals a number, it's always a horizontal line, straight across. And it's going to be straight across when y is negative 1. So all we have to do here is go to where y is negative 1. It's going to be right here. And it's going to be a horizontal line. So this one is going to be, you know, all these numbers here going straight across. And again, technically, Oops, missed a little bit there in that one. So it's going to be going straight across. But we're not going to use the whole thing. We're only going to use the part where x is equal to 3 or greater than 3. So again, where's uh, x is 3, 1, 2, 3? That's right here. So that's this part right here. It's equal to, so we'll fill that in. And if it's greater than, it's going to go just straight to the right. Kind of reminds me of Christmas. Okay, so there's, so there's our graph for that one. So now let's look at the domain and the range. The domain, remember, are the x's. Let's look left and right. Domains go left and right. The x's go left and right. So if this 
red one is going to keep going to the left. Are we going to use all the X's to the left? Yep. Do we use the X's here at uh, three? Yeah, we use the one down here on the green and it's going to go to the right. It's going to keep going to the right. We're going to use all of them. So again, on this one, the domain will be all real numbers. And the range, again, we're looking now with the range, we're looking up and down, up and down. So going up and down, well, since this red graph goes down, 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 we're using all of them going down. And the green, it's just on negative one. But that's, that's we've already got that covered with the red. But it doesn't go any higher uh, than two on the Y. It doesn't keep going that way, so it stops there. So in this case, all we have to say for the range is that this is the set of numbers where y is, uh, this was 1, 2, so less than 2, not equal to because it's an open circle. So it has to be just less than, no equal to. Okay? So that's what that one looks like. Now there's gonna, they're going to give you a, a, a few problems where they give you the graph and you just have to write what that is. So all you're going to do is just look at the parts of this graph and figure out what that line is and then you just have to figure out what part of the line you're going to use. Okay, so let's start here with, um, let's see, where's my pen here? Oh, there it's down there. Let's start with this part right here. Okay, so first of all, what's the y-intercept there? Well, one, two, three, four, negative four. Okay, so negative 4 is the y-intercept, and the slope is up 1 over 1. So that part, slope is 1, b or the y-intercept is negative 4. So let's, let's kind of write this over here. So again, again, remember we started like this. We say f of x equals, okay, so let's, let's do this part first up here. We'll say, what's the equation of this line? It's going to be... 1x or just x minus 4. Okay? We'll figure out what part of the line we'll use in a second. But then what's this line over here? It's a straight across line. What kind of uh, equation is that? It's always y equals and um, it's going to be at just 1. So remember this f of x is really y, so y equals 1. So here are our two parts x minus 4 for this one down here, 1 for this one. Now we just have to figure out what part we're using. Well, what part are we using of the uh, x minus 4? We're starting where x is 2 and going to the left. So we're going to say here, if x is less than 2. And the top one here, it starts at 2 in equal. So we're going to say if x is greater than or equal to 2. So this would be writing the equation from that graph. Okay, so we're just kind of doing it backwards there. Got a, got a feel for that? Absolute value. Here's the other part we've got to talk about absolute value. All right, absolute value function contains an algebraic expression with absolute value symbols, as you'd probably guess. It might look something like this f of x equals the absolute value of x. Uh, remember, f of x is really just y, so that's really the same thing as y equals the absolute value of x. Very, very important thing to know here. These kind of graphs will always make a v shape. They always make a v shape, okay? v for value, v for value. Um, so you're gonna have to keep that in mind when you go to graph these. All right, let's take a look at an example. All right, here's that same, basically that same graph we just talked about uh, earlier here. This is uh, y equals absolute value of x. Now, when you go to graph this, remember I said it's going to make a V shape. So if you get a few of these points on one side of the V, but you don't see where it makes the V, you might think it's a straight line. So you have to watch out to where that point in the V is. And uh, what will help you find that is whatever's inside the absolute value, in this case it's just the x, you want to the point of the v is what's going to make that equal zero. Okay, So in this case, if x is the only thing in there, what's going to make x zero if x is zero? So I'm going to put zero right here because I want to choose a couple of points on both sides of that point because that's the, the tip of the v there. 
So if I put 0 in for x, what happens? Absolute value of 0 is 0. What if I put in 1? Absolute value of 1 is 1. What if I put in 2? Absolute value of 2 is 2. So you start to see what's, what's happening here. We've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Now if that's all you did, you might think, oh, it's a line, straight line. But wait, let's try negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So that means this point is going to go negative 1, positive 1. There's the V. And if we put in negative 2, absolute value of that is positive 2. So it's going to go right here. Now you notice, oh look, it's making a V. It's going to look like this. Okay, so there's your V. That's what it looks like. And basically this is kind of in a way a form of a, a piecewise uh, graph. It's, it's making up the two parts of the V there as well. Okay, so that's what it looks like. What's the domain and the range? Remember what we were talking about before. The domain are the x values. So going left and right, do we use um, all the x's? If we're going to use all the x's and it's going to keep going to the right, we're going to use all of them. This line goes to the left, it's going to keep going to the left. We're going to use them all. So in this case again, the domain is going to be all reals. What about the y's? Remember now look up and down, up and down. So both of these now are going up. So they're both going to keep going up. So we're going to use all the y's going up. But where does the graph not go? It doesn't go below zero. So what we would have to say here for the range is, the range is where y is greater than or equal to zero. Because that's where all the graph is, is greater than or equal to zero. There's nothing below it. So we'd say y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? All right, how about this one? I'm just going to change the color for the heck of it here. Um, how about purple? All right, so this one's a little bit different now, but still kind of where we want to uh, see where the point of the V is, it's going to be whatever makes the absolute value zero here. So again, it's just an X in there, so we want to start it's zero there. Okay. So now I've left this open in the middle here where we can show our work. So we've got, if we plug in zero for x, we have the absolute value of zero, which is zero plus one means y is one. So now we've got the point of zero, one. What if we do one? We've got the absolute value of one plus one, which is two, one, two. And 2 here would be the absolute value of 2 plus 1, which is 3. So again, you notice, oh, it looks like a straight line, but we got to find the rest of the V there. So we go to the other side, negative 1. Now we've got the absolute value of negative 1 plus 1. Well, what's the absolute value of 1? 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So here's where it's going to bend back up again. So 1, negative 1, 2. And then let's do one more point here, negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 plus 1, absolute value of negative 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And if you notice, this is going to happen all the time, or a lot, where um, depending exactly on where your points are, but where it's going to go back up in a kind of a um, matching pattern on the other side. A lot of times that happens. So our graph would look like this. There's our graph. How about the domain? Left and right on the x's, we've used all the x's going to the left. Out here, out here going to the right, we've used them all. So it's all reals. What about the range? Where's this graph? All of the lines that we've drawn on this graph are above 1 this time. So this time, for the range, we're going to say y has to be greater than or equal to 1. Oops. If you notice something here, too, remember the one we did there before, we had just the absolute value of x, and it was right on 0, 0, and this time it says plus 1, and guess what? It moved up 1. 
Um, in one of the other sections, we're going to talk about this, but that's going to hold true. Anytime you see like plus one here on, on the outside on the end there, move it up one. If you see plus two, it'll move it up two. If you see neg you know, minus three, it's going to move it down three. So this number outside here, whatever that is, that'll move it up and down. We're going to talk about that uh, in another uh, section. But it's very important to take a look at that. All right, one more here. Now this time, notice, remember I was just talking about it moving? This time you've got a plus four, but it's not outside. It's inside the absolute values. So this is going to do something a little bit different. All right, so let's see what happens here. Well, remember, I'm going to start the point of the V is going to be where this stuff inside is 0. Well, what's going to make this stuff inside 0? X would have to be negative 4 because negative 4 plus 4 would be 0. So if you have negative 4 plus 4, that would be 0. And so Y would be 0. So again, that's going to be the point of the V. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It's this point right here. All right, now we're going to pick a couple points on both sides here. So we have negative 4. Let's also go with negative 3. So this is going to be negative 3 plus 4, the absolute value. What's negative 3 plus 4? 1. Absolute value of that is 1. So we have negative 3, 1. And then negative 2 would be absolute value of negative 2 plus 4, Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. The absolute value of that is 2. So negative 2, 2. That's just one side. So let's go to the other side and see here now. So here, now what if we did negative 5? This would be absolute value of negative 5 plus 4, which is negative 1. But then when you take the absolute value, it's positive 1. So it's going to be negative 5, 1. And then one more, negative 6. Absolute value of negative 6 plus 4 is, well, the at negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, but when you take the absolute value, it becomes positive 2. And so it's going to be negative 6, 2 is going to be like that. And we go, hey, look at, there's our V now. And it's going to look something like that. What happened this time? This time from that center spot, it moved it over four places to the left. And you notice we had a plus four in here. So it was so it was whatever we had in here, since we did plus four, it actually moved it four to the left. It moved it um, four places to the left. So that's again, um, that's something that will happen, and we'll look at that in, in a, the next section. But uh, that is a predictable thing that will happen is it'll move uh, if this is plus four, it'll move four to the left. If it was minus four, it would move four to the right. So uh, we'll look at that uh, a little later. But anyway, here's our graph. Uh, the domain, if you hadn't guessed it by now, since it's going to go both left and right, the domain are all reals. And the range, remember, up and down, where's all this stuff being graphed? It's all above zero. So the range y is greater than or equal to zero. And that's our range, okay? One last thing that I just want to throw out and kind of let you be familiar with this. I'm not going to ask you to, to work and do these graphs here, but um, this situation they give you here is a, an example of a step function. And so this is kind of typical what could happen here. It says the daily grind charges $1.25 per pound of meat or any fraction thereof. So basically, if you go over a pound of meat, it's going to charge you for a whole nother pound. Okay, so whatever you get, they're going to charge you for the, the full pound that you have plus any part of a pound. And um, so this is an example of a step function because uh, it won't act like C here. C, you go, hey, one pound, dollar twenty-five. Oh, that makes sense, sure. But if you get a pound and a half on this graph, it says it's going to be halfway between 125 and 150. But that's not the case. It says if you get half of a pound, they're going to charge you for a full pound anyway. So this C would not be the, the choice here. You know, if you look at D, um, here, if you have zero pounds of meat, you're not going to pay anything. That's good. But if you come out here, it says if you get a pound of meat, that's this dot right here, you're not paying anything. You're getting a pound of meat for free. 
Well, that doesn't make any sense. So D can't be it. If you look at B, here you start at zero pounds and you got a dot on 125. That means you're getting no pounds of meat, but you have to pay $1.25 for nothing. Okay, that doesn't make any sense either. So our only logical answer here is A. And what's happening here is it's zero. It's an open circle, so that means you're not paying anything there yet. But as soon as you start to get a little bit of meat, it's going to cost you $1.25, and it will cost you $1.25 up to a pound. Once you go over a pound, it's going to jump up to two fifty dollars for any part of that meat up to two pounds. So uh, that's what we call a step function. I just want you to, to be familiar with that, be able to look at that graph um, and see, oh, that is a step function because it looks like stair steps. Uh, postal service, it's kind of the same thing. You pay a certain amount to send um, something through the mail up to, you know, two ounces or whatever it is. I don't know what it is these days. Um, but then when it goes over that, then you, your cost jumps up. Um, it doesn't go up slowly as your letter gets heavier. It's a certain level that it jumps up to, you know, for like another ounce or two. And then it jumps up for another ounce or two. So the postal service does the same thing. Um, with a step function. And tell you the truth, I don't even know post uh, what what it costs to mail letters anymore. Um, but the point is, uh, be familiar with uh, what a step function looks like. Okay, so um, that's it. Uh, what we've done today is we took a look at uh, piecewise functions, how to graph those, how to look at a graph and write it, and then the third thing was uh, a graph uh, absolute value. Uh, equation and uh, figure out the domain and range out of all those. So anyway, thanks for being here today. Uh, and I guess we'll see you the next time uh, on Algebra 2. Bye.